So have you felt uncertainty, anxiety, restlessness? Um, that's part of what we're seeing in the Great Resignation. But it's deeper than that. I'm going to share with you an interview I had with Kurt Andre. He's an expert in understanding the nature of systems and how do we look at fire drills and people reacting and thinking that, gee, I just need to leave. How do we look at that through a systems lens to get an accurate perspective on how do we tackle it? I've broken up our conversation into little chunks, about seven minute chunks, so that it's easy to digest and it's around just one particular theme, but the whole conversation was valuable to me. I think it'll be valuable to you in helping giving you some perspective and context for some of the challenges and reevaluating some of the things that are acting out the fire drills through the lens of a system. So let's move to the conversation. The curiosity started out when I coached for a week, couple weeks ago, five of the people that I spoke to essentially said, I've got a secure job, I'm making good money, but I think I need to change jobs. And mm. so, you know, when you hear the first one say that, you say, okay, well, what's the issue? And But when you hear five in a week say essentially the same thing, then it reminded me of some of the things that that I heard when we were at TAG and this thing called anxiety in the system. Mm -hmm. And, um, but a lot of things are playing out because of anxiety in the system. You know, mm -hmm. the, the uh, violence on airplanes, the resistance to come back into the office, mm -hmm. the vaccine debate. So I thought what would be useful for me is to hear you share a little bit on your perspective on this well, and, and interesting that you had folks on that end of the continuum, and I'm sure you're probably seeing on this end, which is probably more of what I'm running into. I'm miserable. I, I don't like where I am. There's a toxicity in the system, but I'm going to stay because of their anxiety and because of the anxiety system. So, you know, to me, I think uh, anxiety, systemic and individual can show up in lots of different ways. And give me a recent example of where you've kind of encountered this thing called anxiety in the system. So, so you and I can unpack this a little bit because mm -hmm. I think the people I work with would like to hear a little more. They're experiencing this, but they mm -hmm. don't have the language or the lens of mm -hmm. what this means to see anxiety in the system. Right. Well, it might be a good place to start. What do we mean by anxiety in the system? Yeah. Uh, that, that, when, when individuals don't see things as a system, either their family, their business, uh, there's a tendency to draw conclusions that might not be accurate. Like, like for example, one of the markers for me when I'm, I'm dealing with two organizations right now, uh, they're, they're government entities, uh, they're very much at odds with each other, there's a lot of conflict. So they asked me to come in and help them navigate uh, because the, these two groups playing together is really important for the, the constituency they serve. And so as I'm interviewing these people, I'm hearing really competent people. They're committed to the mission. They care about the work they do. Um, they care about each other. But what they're doing is they're scapegoating each other. This person's a problem. That group's an issue. When my perception is this isn't about an individual issue. This is a systemic issue. And when we don't see things through the lens of a system, one of our tendencies is to scapegoat. For example, you know, people might wanting to leave because, well, my boss is a jerk or, uh, you know, that, that, that um, we have to realize that we're functioning within a system. And so to frame what we're struggling with well, I think really ha is important. Virtually every client I'm working with, Rex, uh, again, whether it's a solopreneur, I had a great coaching session with a lawyer today, uh, or Fortune 100 company, 20,000 20, employees, um, they're dealing with anxiety. Uh, and, and part of it is within the culture within we, which we exist with the pandemic, uh, with politics, you could even argue the vicarious trauma for watching people get off planes uh, and being dropped from planes from Afghanistan, uh, that there's a tremendous amount of anxiety culturally, and there's a, a tremendous amount of anxiety within systems. Uh, and so I'm hearing it coming up from, again, organizations, teams struggling to be effective with each other, uh, the fear of the unknown. 
just read an article today about GM and pushing pause on all these plants because they can't get chips. Uh, and so they're shutting down and taking extended pause in Mexico, Canada, across the United States. So we're seeing anxiety uh, in organizations just disproportionately that I think the 30 some years I've been doing this work, similar to you, uh, uh, it's, it's just very unique. What I'm hearing is that when you see reactions that are disproportionate to mm -hmm. the issue <laughs> or seem to be, you know, like we see at school boards over masks. Um, right. and, and I'm working with uh, a superintendent's organization where those individuals are burning out and quitting mm -hmm. at record numbers because of the irrationality and and being being the scapegoat in all of this so right. let's let's wind back to the people that i've talked to that are saying you know i got a good job but i want to leave mm -hmm. how would you walk them through or let's just role play with me i'm saying you know i've got a good job uh, mm -hmm. projects are okay uh, i i don't like the management decisions being made here, I think I'd be happier someplace else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so great, great scenarios that are obviously very real. I think for me, when I would start the coaching conversation, I want to know a little bit more about the context within mm -hmm. which they're serving. Where does the anxiety come from? Uh, you know, are we running ridiculously lean uh, and yet are expected to have high output? Uh, mm -hmm. Therefore, the expectation of, of deliverable, uh, there's a gap between um, uh, I had a coaching session today with somebody they, they've had multiple failure hires during COVID uh, because the people that they're looking for, the only folk that are applying are unemployed. Uh, and in the accounting world, if somebody has been un unemployed for a long time, there's a reason for that. So I would want to understand first off the context within which they're working and then how they're framing the anxiety. Cause you know, anxiety in and of itself isn't bad. We, we need anxiety. Uh, it can propel us forward, it can cause us to stop. But when it's either too high or too low, that's when the problem is. So what I would want to know from the individual that I'm working with, help me understand the context within which you're working, and, and why you're feeling compelled to think about going somewhere else. Um, you know, we've all heard that cliche that the grass is never greener on the other side, the grass is greener where we water it. Um, and so uh, before a person moves, it's like, you know, selling a house today, you can sell a house today and make a lot of money, but then you're going to buy a house for a lot of money. So I'm hearing people that want to move, you might want to leave where you are, but that's no guarantee that where you're headed is going to be any different. They're dealing with the pandemic as well. Right. They're dealing with forces beyond their control. So I, I always try to start with, is there any way that we can address where you are? Uh, because leaving creates a whole nother series of, 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 of variables that might make their anxiety worse. Now, one of my big takeaways in this section is that when I am called in to deal with a situation and every week I'm called in to deal with three or four different conflict situations, they're actually part of a bigger system. So we tackle that, but it's going to remain and show up in other ways through the blame shifting that Kurt talked about. So let's think of the system as a beast that's driving us all into different directions and making one another the problem instead of looking at the nature and what's driving the system as Kurt was giving an illustration on. So we'll continue with the conversation, but that's my big takeaway on this piece. Look at the system nature of the challenge and look at the individual behavior as a reflection of what's going on in the system.